Hello, my fellow sovereigns, and welcome back to another episode of the Crown Yourself podcast as we embark on the last eight weeks of this year. What? <laughs> like, if your head is spinning and you're wondering, like, where did this year go? And maybe you're looking back like me and you're like, holy shit, how much did we manifest? Like, our dream home. We traveled a bunch. I spoke at multiple conferences, like just in the past six weeks. It's been an absolute dream and a recalibration at a whole new level. And both for myself and my clients, I have just watched the most epic transformation take place. And if you're looking back and you're like, I want more of that in 2024, or maybe you're looking back and you're like, wow, 2023 was hard. And I burned out a little bit and which is something I also experienced to be like amidst the epic ups. I also had some pretty low lows and in that space seeing like, yeah, I could have used a little bit more support. I could have used somebody to to champion and shift my mindset because I was in a space where I was blaming or maybe my mindset could have been a little bit positive or maybe I was stuck for a little bit too long and I could have asked for more support out. I just didn't know who and how and I needed some guidance. And that is why I'm so excited to say that I have three spots open up for coaching for the last of 2023 and into 2024 because I'm sure you know this and you've seen on Instagram that the millionaire business owners are not planning their 2024 on December 31st. They're planning right now in November, in late October, in preparation for the entire year. And that is what I want to do with you so that you are set with a mindset, a skill set, systems, strategy, sales techniques, a vision, people surrounding you, whether it's your community or your family or your team, surrounding you in a way that you up-level and uplift from your current circumstances into that space where you know that you belong. And if you are like, 2024 is my year and I am claiming everything that I came here for, then hit the button in the description and book a consult call with me. I have space for three private clients, but I do have space for multiple consults. So even if we're not a fit for the longer term, we'll get the three crown jewels of the profit plan to increase your business and improve the quality of your life by up to 300% within one consult. And you will have a customized, personalized strategy to guide you into 2024 based on your subconscious success system. Not on mine, but on yours. And that's where I differ from other coaches is I don't believe in the codependent coaching model of like, you're going to need to have a coach for life. I want to see you transform. And maybe that's within the span of working together for three months. Or maybe like many of my clients this past year, it has been within just the span of a 90 minute consult. So whether we work together for the three month term, or whether we work together for just the consult, and you have that plan, and then you take epic aligned action, because you had it know exactly what what and where you need to execute, click below, register for a consult. I will see you there. And I look forward to working with you to set you up for the most epic of 2024s. And now let's go to the episode. Welcome to the Crown Yourself podcast, where together we build your empire and transform your subconscious stories about what's possible for your business, body, and life. I'm your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, and I'm a master mindset coach, best-selling author, TEDx speaker, known to my clients as a game changer. Each week, you get the conscious leadership strategies you need to help you reign with courage, clarity, and confidence so that you too can make the income and impact you deserve. Imagine this podcast as your royal invitation to step into your full potential and reign in your divine purpose. Your sovereignty starts here and your reign is now. 
Hello, my fellow sovereigns, and welcome back to the Crown Yourself podcast. I am so excited to be here with you today as we dive into how to establish, ground into your sovereignty. Because at the Crown Yourself podcast, your sovereignty starts here. And one of the biggest conflicts to sovereignty is when we have a problem, right? It's very easy to face a problem and suddenly it's like that challenge. And we, If we place the responsibility outside of ourselves, suddenly we are no longer in our sovereign power. We have externalized the cause, which then allows us to blame, shame, complain, and not fix the shit. However, when you put yourself 100% cause, as you know, that is when you're in your place of your sovereign power. So as the good-hearted queens and kings and sovereigns who listen to this show, I know that we all take epic personal responsibility. But when we face a problem, it's then what, where does the problem come from? Like, how do we deal with the problem? And that is what we are diving into today. Because when we face a problem, it can be a myriad of different things, right? It can be depression. It can be hormones. It can be grief. It can be nervous system regulation. It can be your old beliefs. It can be another person, a place. It could be blame. It could be astrological. It could be all these other types of things that we may think that it is. It could be physiological. It could be emotional. It could be spiritual. It could be mental. It could be dark magic. Um, so I know some of you won't resonate with that language, but bear with me. I, for those that do, um, I will dive into that. It could be your shadow. It could be your inner child. It could be financial. It could be yours. It may not be yours. Is what is this problem? Is it a collective problem? Is it an astrological problem? Like when we take responsibility for our world, for our actions, for our problems, we then get to look at this giant onion of a problem. And there are many layers and many levels of every problem. And the thing that I have seen as a high performance coach and as a leadership coach for the past seven years to some extraordinary entrepreneurs and founders and CEOs is that the problem is rarely what you think it is. However, all problems are relational. And it's never the problem that's the problem. It's the perspective that you have around the problem. It's how you are relating to that problem that actually is the problem. And here's what I mean. Because if you think about a problem, like let's say you have a problem with your ex and you're in, you had a divorce and there was a custody battle and your ex was that bastard who did X, Y, and Z. And then you do into some therapy, you did some coaching, you, you healed some wounds around betrayal and, and the issues that came up in that marriage. And you realize how much you've grown now. You've, it's now been a, some, you've had the time to heal, to become aware and to change your relationship with the problem. And when you change your relationship as to how you perceive the problem, the entirety of the problem has the power of either changing or completely disappearing. It's not the problem, it's your perspective about the problem. And so the way that you're relating to the problem is the problem. So how you relate to the problem, it can be your attitude around the problem. Maybe you're going or into any sort of dialogue or conversation with this person that you're having a problem with, and you come in with a crappy attitude. And that is what you're focusing on. You're just like Miss Negative Nelly. And when you go in with a crappy attitude, that's part of the relationship as to how you're relating to the problem. It can be your programming. It can be like subconscious plagiarized programming, as I call it, where you've adopted some beliefs about the problem. Maybe you've adopted some belief of like as you're dealing with a boss or a spouse who's a, a or an ex-spouse or an ex lover who's a man and you're thinking, oh, that's the patriarchy. That's the patriarchy that's the problem. And maybe it's not. Maybe there maybe it's something else. Maybe it's your beliefs around it. Maybe it's your your subconscious beliefs around what you think the problem is. Like if you're struggling in your business and you believe that business is hard and you're having a lot of hard problems in your business, then maybe the way that you're relating to business as business being hard is actually the problem. 
It can be what you're relating to inside of the problem. So it can be the person that you're dealing with. It can be a thing. It can be an experience. And you'll notice this if there is blame or aka a perception outside of yourself of responsibility. Because the only person that we have responsibility for and the only person that we can actually change is ourselves. So that's a huge piece of the problem. And so if you notice, oh, I'm blaming them. Oh, I'm putting all the causality on that person, on that thing, on that political party, on that issue for the problem, then suddenly I'm, I have no control. It, you give up your own agency to solve the problem. Another one, and this is for my empaths. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> is when the problem isn't even yours. And this can be either something that you could experience in a codependent relationship where there is the the problem is that you're relating codependently to the problem or this also could be energetic entanglement so where you feel or experience someone else's energy and it kind of got stuck onto you in ancient hawaiian huna they call this sort of energy that we all as humans have aka and it's the sticky stuff that is how we get connected and sometimes when when we get our aka interconnected it affects our perception of the person from a while back or from that experience. So for example, my father for a, the longest time, he, his envisioning of me was not as who I was as, as a grown-up woman until I gave birth to my child. He, he pictured constantly me as this very impulsive, reactive, emotionally um, Un dysregulated, quite frankly, teenager. And he had that image and he held that image of me as a 16 year old up until about the time that I was about 28, 29. And then when I when I staged his intervention, that's when everything shifted because he saw that I no longer was available to be thought of like that and or experience the behavior that he exhibited during that time. And that was because he was holding on to a perception that the old identity of who I had been, that Akka, that was what he was identifying with and relating to instead of relating to me as a 28, 29 year old woman. And that that can be a piece of the problem is that you're relating to the person as they were and not as to who they are. You can also feel this if you've like ever been in a hospital, not necessarily to like receive a surgery or a procedure, but if you've gone there as a visitor and still you come home and you're like exhausted and you need you feel like you need like an energetic shower and there's like just energy. Well, hospital, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of activity and there's a lot of energy transmuting through bodies as people die or like so there is a lot of energy in a hospital and so that's why so many people even those who are not super not clear it's not clairvoyant but super em empathetic to to those sensations they still feel that sort of like that need to have an energetic shower kind of after they experience the hospital so that's that's a key piece and then I promise you for all my woos that I would be addressing the dark magic piece. So there is light and there is dark. And no, you don't want to fuck with the dark. You just don't. Now, there is definitely evil out there. That is for sure. But truly, like, unless you're a really powerful and influential human being, it's very highly unlikely that anyone's put a curse on you. And that's the reason why you're facing these problems. Like, it's it's very highly unlikely. So a lot of times if you think that or if you've ever thought that, oh, it's someone putting a curse on you or some woo-woo or something like that, that's normally our egos getting inflated, thinking that we're all big and important and that people are like actively seeking to destroy us. It's very rare. It's honestly very rare. And more often than not, I've seen with my highly influential clients that when you just understand how to shift your perception around the problem, the problem will disappear. And so it's the magic of actually changing your perception. And that's some some amazing light magic if you that language resonates with you. But here's the thing is that the problem is not the problem. The problem is how you're relating to the problem. And so when you change the relationship to the problem, the problem changes your perspective. And that is where the real magic happens. So when you shift your perspective, 
you want to also make sure that you're shifting the perspective on the plane that the problem exists on. So this is the part number two to understanding First, we need to understand how we relate to the problem. How we are, how are we experiencing it? Are we experiencing it as something outside of us? Something inside of us? What are we blaming? What are we? What? What is an example of this problem? How has this showed up in other areas of our life? And then the other piece that I see so many people get wrong when they're facing a problem is they address it on the wrong plane. So there are multiple planes of existence. Right now, we have our three D plane where It's the physical reality. You are physically here, physically hearing the vibrations of my voice. That is the physical 3D reality. Now, the vibrations of my voice and this information, this podcast may be stimulating that second plane of the emotional plane of the the unconscious. It may be bringing some belief systems. You may be wanting to punch me in the face. Like, (laughs) please don't. But uh, you may be experiencing some challenge to your belief systems and you may be feeling or experiencing some emotions. You maybe get that that aha, that sort of like revelatory aha where you're like, you're experiencing some really good emotions because you're having a breakthrough because of this. So there's that piece. There's also the mental piece, which is you're getting that mental breakthrough. You're connecting the dots on a whole different level. You're seeing through that mental so that we have the mental plane of existence. And then we also have the spiritual plane of existence. Now, which is our higher conscious selves. It's, it's our higher conscious mind. So not every problem, though, is a spiritual crisis. And I see this with a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs where they perceive or put the blame, in essence, on God, source, universe for not giving them what they think they want. That's kind of like blaming your parents for not giving you the chocolate. <laughs> Like, and when really your parents are like, well, you didn't eat your broccoli. So like, go eat your chocolate, like go eat the broccoli and then I'll give you the chocolate. An example of this, of, of people perceiving a problem on the wrong plane is when you're struggling with losing weight, it's probably not God source universe punishing you for a sin. It's probably much more likely that you need to just move your body on a daily basis, or maybe eat more protein, or stop that nightly ice cream binge, or cut out the sugar, maybe move your body. It's a physical problem on the physiological, on the physical plane. The same is actually true with money. So many people make the mistake in business, especially when you're getting into the spiritual manifestation practices, That they think that because they're not doing enough affirmations or they're not journaling or um, setting their intentions every day with money, that that's really where the problem is. And I'm like, typically what I've seen is, queen, it's just because you're not making offers or you're not asking for that raise or you're not doing the thing that's going to generate more income. You're not investing. um, You're not saving a piece of some of your money. Like money is actually a very 3D physical reality. It's the physiological, the physical planes, 3D manifestation of our energy. So money is is not, it, it is spiritual and it's happening on the physical because your energy is the most important thing. So the biggest thing, if you're struggling with a money problem, it's not doing hours of affirmation. That's a mental plane thing. We want to always solve the problem on the plane that is the problem. So the money problem, go out there and sell. Go out there and sell. Go out there, pitch your services, make your offers. Alex Hermosi's $100 million offers is a great place to start to start crafting an offer for a problem that you can solve. Solve a problem, get paid to solve that problem, and go out there and repeat. If you're struggling with a mental health problem, the reason I don't fully like the words mental health is it makes us perceive that a mental health problem is on the mental plane. It's a that it's a thinking problem. Sometimes it is. More often than not, sometimes a mental health problem actually needs to be solved on the physical plane, meaning maybe it's a hormonal issue. Maybe you have an excess of cortisol in your body, and that's actually the problem to this mental health thing. That's a hormonal 3D thing that's happening inside your body. 
Maybe it is a phys- a chemical imbalance in your body. Maybe it and the chemical imbalance that is a 3D physiological thing. Can your thoughts and feelings affect that? Absolutely. Yes. That I mean, read Dr. Bruce Lipton's The Biology of Belief. And at the same time, like again, I'm not a med- I'm not a medical professional, so this is complete medical disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. If you're struggling with a mental health problem, sometimes it is something that needs to be addressed on the physical plane. It is that imbalance in the body. And so you may need to seek that outside support from a doctor to get that physiological support on the 3D realm and also then address the emotions and the the thoughts that are coming with that, along with with any thoughts that come with any sort of diagnosis, because any sort of diagnosis then has thoughts and beliefs that are attached to that. Um, So being able to address those thoughts and beliefs that come with that and what are any secondary gains that come with having that diagnosis. So a lot of times the chemical imbalance of the physical body, sometimes that needs to be addressed physiologically, like with a doctor and a prescription. Sometimes that needs to be addressed by your diet and eating more greens and having more protein and having more, you know, better nutrients. All of those changes, though, are on the physiological plane. I'm not saying don't address the emotional and the mental. Of course I am. Like, that's all what this podcast is about. But we need to look at what plane is the problem actually on, because then we can actually look like, is it more of a physical problem? Is it also a belief problem? Because both will show up. So if you're trying to solve the problem on the wrong plane, that's really where the problem is happening. And that's really where the problem actually won't get solved. You need if you're if it's a mental problem, if it's a belief problem. Let's say it's a belief problem around money. And you have a, a belief problem where you don't believe that you can earn over six figures. And so that it would make you bad or greedy or wrong or whatever. If you have that belief problem, yes, that's going to manifest on the physical plane. Yes, you will cap your income. And you need to address the the problem then on the mental plane. So addressing it on that mental plane about really looking at does is is this belief effective? Is this belief serving me? Do I really want to make over six figures? What do I believe will happen at six figures? What do I believe will will I'll need to sacrifice if I get over six figures? Um, what do I believe that if I did reach over six figures that it could do for me positively? How could I benefit the world if I was making more money? Asking yourself all of the sort of mental realm questions along with addressing the feelings. How would I feel if I was achieving more than six figures? What what would that allow me to do? How would that allow me, if feeling more joyful, if feeling more free, what would then that allow me to do with my time? How could I expand the mission that I have? Allowing yourself to process then through mental, emotional, and the physical of like, okay, well, if I was making more than six figures, then what would I need to be doing on a daily basis? And then you address the doing. So yes, the money problem has to be hand- handled on the, physio- uh, on the physical 3D realm. So meaning you have to go out there and make more offers or raise your prices or create a whole new offer or sell one to many or sell one on one or um, start a new business, get some venture capital funding, like whatever it is that you need to do on that physical plane. Also addressing the mental beliefs, knowing where it's stemming from and knowing how it trickles down. Because if it's a belief problem, then it also has to, the solution has to trickle down from the realm of the problem into the realm of the physical. Because nothing is changed if the physical doesn't change. Your 3D environment is always going to be a reflection of of you. And so that 3D environment, in order to change that, in order to change whether it's the environment of what you're looking at in your bank account or the environment of what you're looking at on the scale or the circumstances in which you're in, in order to change that, the things that happen, the thoughts you think, the beliefs you shift on the mental realm, it, that's why I say it's not just affirmations. It has to then trickle down. Your actions have to trickle into the doing of what is it that you then need to do on this 3D physical plane, which we all are living in, in order to make the shift so that you're aligned spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. That is how you solve any problem for yourself. So if this message served, if you're like, whoa, queen, blew my mind, please do me a favor and share this episode with just one person. This is spreading some good capital karma. 
your way. Um, and this is just being able to get this message out. So more people have these tools to be able to look at problems differently. Because when we shift our perspective around how we deal with problems, we shift the problem. And that's when we change our perceptions and our perspectives of what's possible. We then are that testimony for possibility. So share this with just one person. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited to see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If what you heard resonated with you, be sure to subscribe and start creating a bigger impact now by sharing this with a friend. Just by doing that one simple act of kindness, you are creating a royal ripple to support more people in their sovereignty. And if you're not already following on social media, connect with me everywhere at crownyourself.now for more inspiration. I am so excited to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, go out there and create a body, business, and life that rules. Because today, you crown yourself.